Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, there we go. Sharon Sharon says it's four minutes past 12 in the morning. Thank you so much. You're joining us in the middle of the night. Have a good sleep after this. Well, welcome and thank you very much for coming here to this webinar, which is about a programme in the anthropology department, the anthropology of global futures and sustainability. You know that if you're here, so welcome. Uh, and it is lovely to have you. I'm going to keep my bit of the conversation rather short, actually, because I want to hear from you, if you are happy to share um, about a little bit about your experience, why you're here and any questions that you have about the programme or about SOAS in general. So I'm going to talk for probably about 15 minutes and I've got a really short PowerPoint to share with you, which gives some of the kind of core sense of what the programme is and its structure and why we're excited about it. Um, but then after that, we're going to have mainly time, and we don't even need to use all of our time until five, it depends on how many questions you have, to talk, uh, talk through your questions and let us know a bit about you and why you're interested in this programme of all programmes. Right. My name is Ben Bowles, and I'm a lecturer in social anthropology here at SOAS. I say here at SOAS, that is SOAS behind me as my backdrop, that's what the front of it looks like in leafy Bloomsbury in London. But I'm actually, um, as quite a few of us are, um, working from home at the moment. I am in uh, my study in Leighton Buzzard in Bedfordshire. So go north from London upwards up the train line for about 50 minutes and you, and you find where I am now. Um, yeah, I am going to run you through the specifics for the programme, give you a little bit of information about it, but then we're gonna have plenty of time for questions afterwards. I'm about to do a, uh, do a screen share. If anybody has any difficulty seeing what I do with the, uh, with the screen share, please do let me know. Um, I will make sure that I am in the right bit of file first, which, which is the most important bit. Here we are, all right. And I am going to screen share with you this PowerPoint. Let me know if that looks wrong if something doesn't uh, doesn't look right there. Fantastic. Okay, so welcome to this webinar. As I say, I'm going to be talking you through the MA in the Anthropology of Global Futures and Sustainability. That's a new program here in the Anthropology Department, and we're really excited about it. We've been thinking for a while about how the Anthropology Department can really properly engage with the biggest issues of the moment, with climate change, with carbon responsibility, with sustainability, and with a critical perspective on development. And this is really a flagship program. This is something that we really hope is going to um, be right at the forefront of what the department does for a while to come. And I will, on this slide, share with you some of the things that we think makes it really special. You will, if you've um, done your homework and been looking around at different programmes in the UK, realise that this is a unique programme. There's nothing quite like this. There are degree programmes which are about sustainability and conservation, but none of them um, have this kind of anthropological perspective right at the core of them and the same kind of focus on political communication. Nothing takes the, uh, these questions, sustainability, climate change and how to imagine uh, better and more equitable futures and does so from an engaged anthropology perspective that looks at how anthropology can really change the world. That's why we're excited about this. And so here are just some key features of why we think that this is a particularly brilliant program. Firstly, at SOAS is the part of the University of, Lon of London that has the greatest regional focus that has a load of expertise in Africa and Asia in particular. Uh, in particular. And the departments of the university are all incredibly good um, at a really specific deep dive into what's going on in these particular regions. So if you have a regional specialism um, in a part of Asia or Africa, then it really is, um, then SOAS really is the place for you. You don't have to, and we do have people who've studied in various other parts of the world, but it, this is a real strength, especially if you have an interest in languages or politics of cult or culture of particular parts of Africa and Asia. Um, within our department, and we have a really lovely mixed facu faculty with a lot of different skills, we have people who are very used to working with uh, development organisations, government departments, NGOs, activist organisations, um, the media. We have a lot of very engaged anthropologists who are used to not just being academics, but putting their skills to work. 
So that's the first thing to say, is this is an engaged um, department, and this is a programme that we hope is going to, uh, going to lead our engaged practice. Secondly, um, the, one of the real features of this master's programme is the fact that it includes a dissertation, a major piece of research, a research project that you can undertake in whatever region or um, thematic specialism you happen to have. So whatever your interest is, you'll be able to explore that anthropologically with some expert supervision from one of our faculty. And if you're curious about who those faculty are and where they work, and you're thinking, oh, do they have expertise in the particular part of China or East Africa that I'm interested in, have a look at our faculty staff page and see who we've got, because we've got um, a really good uh, set of set of staff with these interests across the places that you and ideas that you may be interested in. We want to, as I've already said a little bit about, focus on skills and political communication. We don't want you uh, to be coming out of a master's degree only able to write a university essay. We want to make sure that you have the pra uh, a practice in writing for different kinds of audiences and thinking about how anthropology can really make change. So that means policy briefings, it means write, um, writing things for the media, writing, uh, writing journalistic type articles, uh, lobbying governments. We want to really emphasize skills and anthropology's place in making, as I say, engaged political change. And the last two are slightly more gen general, but I think really important. Firstly, there isn't another opportunity. We think this is a genuinely unique opportunity in the UK to explore the big pressing issues facing humanity with a practical focus on communication and change through this anthropological lens. If you are thinking to yourself, I'm not quite sure what that anthropological lens is or means, um, then that's absolutely fine. Some people come and take our programs and they don't really know what anthropology is. Anthropology is focusing maybe on a slightly different level to if you are in uh, previously working in say politics or international relations, um, it's looking at these big topics, but through the social, through people. What are people's experience of these things? Now th those aren't necessarily maybe say the people affected by climate change, those might be the people who are doing the policy, right? Um, it is, might be focusing on a level uh, focusing on the people who get together and decide upon climate uh, climate policy in the UN. They might be your participants, but wherever and whatever scale we're looking at, we're looking at the social, the people who together have ideas and how those ideas go and change the world. It's a focus on culture, and that can be institutional culture, um, the indigenous cultures against processes that are coming in and trying to change them but it's a focus on culture fundamentally at the heart of the study. And then just in numbers, we are a very well ranked department, um, fifth in the UK and 13th in the world at the last set of rankings. So you really are in a great place to come and study anthropology if that is what you choose to do. Now, some of, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, the topics that we cover over this MA are the following. Uh, environmental movements and how to engage with them, humanitarianism, disaster and reconstruction, uh, capitalism and consumption, including new economic alternatives and other forms of labour, Ref refugee crises and migration is another focus, Re nationalism and populism in national politics. These are all things that we'll touch on this course. I as I say, it really is the biggest and greatest issues facing us at the moment. Um, specifically, what does that look like? Well, when you come to study this, you'll take a number of smaller units of study called modules that may or may not be similar to what you've done before with your undergraduate degrees, um, but they look like this. And I'm not going to spend lots of time boring you and saying, you know, for this one, you need to do a 2000 word essay. For this one, you need to do this. You, that, all of that is, information is available on the web page if you're interested. Where you, can, uh, where you can go and have a look at that and see what the actual requirements are and the sample reading list for each of these things. But this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna study. I'll just run you th through it nice and quickly. Theoretical approaches to social anthropology is there for you if you haven't studied anthropology before. If you have, you can opt out of that module. But what it is, is the history 
and grounding of anthropology in, as, uh, as a discipline. What is anthropology? What is an ethnographic or an anthropological way of looking at culture? What is special to anthropology? It's really good grounding and that module is taken by everyone who does an MA in our department. So you'll be with people do, taking the anthropology of food, anthropology of, um, anthropology of you know, medicine, the medical anthropology, and, and the rest of them. Similarly, ethnographic research methods is also across all of our MAs. Ethnography is what anthropologists do in order to uh, construct, their, construct their views of the world, in order to gather their data. It's what I do as, an, as a professional anthropologist. And it involves a very specific method of data collection where you um, live with people or spend at least a lot of time with people over a prolonged period of time in order to really get into their life world, what it is to be them, what it is to see the world the way that they do. And we teach you about that in ethnographic research methods, which involves uh, doing a very small research project as part of that module. Well, you do a much larger research project, um, the dissertation that I've al already mentioned with the expert guidance of a supervisor. That is done over the summer. I'm gonna talk about the structure on the next slide, but you have plenty of time to arrange field work to, with a supervisor, work out what you're interested in and then go and undertake that research. You've then got two really important thematic modules that teach you the themes, anthropology and how it engages with these big issues, the ones from the last slide. The first of those is the anthropology of sustainability, global, future, uh, global sustainability and alternative futures, which talks about sustainability and development from an anthropological perspective. Really, really interesting module. And the other is issues in the anthropology of climate change, which is a very popular module. It's been run to great success th um, this year, which looks at something like climate change may seem big and scientific and really hand hard to get a handle on, but it involves people. It involve involves experts and communities and bodies and experiences and emotions. Anthropologists are really good at go getting at those and adding those into the debate around climate change. And it really does focus on those things. And then there is the bit that I am personally the most excited about, um, how to change things. A brand new piece of study, which I think is particularly innovative, which takes the expertise in the department around um, political engagement and political communication and Takes, it takes a lot of our colleagues who are used to, for example, in the case of Professor Emma Crewe and her Parliaments project, lobbying Parliaments, working out how people can engage with Parliaments around the world, takes that and you'll get an expert workshop from Emma Crewe and her team about how anthropologists can, uh, can lobby Parliaments. Or Ruba Sala, who works um, for organisations representing the needs of uh, migrant communities can come and talk about how anthropologists can, in, uh, can engage politically in migration. You, what we've got around the department are these members of faculty who are very good engaged anthropologists making change in the world. Nowhere before have we brought them all together to give workshops on how to change things. That's what we do here. And that's where we practice different kinds of writing as well, not just your standard essays, but how to write a policy briefing, how to write for the media. Um, we'll also have outside speakers there as well from some of the organisations with which um, our faculty have existing partnerships. So that's the suite of modules you'll have to take on the programme. You also have some options. You have a couple of optional modules that you can take from anywhere in the school. The School of Politics or um, History or learn a language that you've always wanted to learn. Um, or do something to do with cinema, something regional. There's plenty out there or elsewhere from anthropology. So medical anthropology, anthropology of food, that really is completely open and you'll find some wonderful options, I think, on the website. I'm only gonna to talk to you for another few minutes. I want to leave lots of time for questions, but I do wanna give you a few more course specifics. First is assessment, which is going to be really varied on this program. We don't want you just writing essays, as I say. It is all coursework based, there are no exams, but that coursework is a really varied thing. There will be research projects, both the large one and the small one, the ethnographic research method small one and the dissertation large one. As I say, there's out external facing writing, essays, presentations, book reviews, literature reviews. These will be the ways in which you're assessed. 
the teaching is again going to be mixed. It's seminars, tutorials, workshops and lectures. Uh, lots of opportunities in small groups for you to have small group interactions with particular experts in anthropology. In terms of entry requirements, please do whatever you have as an undergraduate degree, write a personal statement and apply. Typically, the re entry requirement is a 2-2 uh, or international equivalent. Um, but feel ple please feel free to talk to me and to apply whatever your experience and whatever your undergraduate degree might be. Um, the, we read all the personal statements and if you can um, make a case for your, your enthusiasm for being part of this project, then, it re uh, then we'll absolutely consider your application. And in terms of how long the prog uh, program lasts and what the, re what the pattern of study is, is um, one year full time is the main way that uh, is one of the main ways we do it. We, I was about to say the main way, but we probably have as many part-time students in anthropology as we have full-time. So it can be one year uh, full-time or it can be two or even three years part-time. So it's worth thinking around your work commitments, around your um, uh, around the other uh, your personal commitments, what might be a good pattern for you. If you were full-time, then what you would have is two teaching terms, one between October and December, and one between January and March, um, where you will complete all of this coursework we've talked about, and then the opportunity to do this extended piece of research and writing over the summer, the dissertation. So it's a very packed year. There's an awful lot going on, and we will keep you very, very busy. But at the end of it, you will have had, I'm sure, a fantastic experience. Now, uh, I know that there's a lot, lot of text on this slide, but um, what you have here are a couple of testimonials. These are also available on the website. So I said that this is the first year that we are running this particular master's program, but it builds on a really successful history in the department of us having a very good, strong anthropology of development MA that some of the foundations of this have built from. And also anthropology, uh, some of us in the past have had students who have had a sustainability or a climate interest and um, have supervised those students. And these are just a couple of um, examples there of the kind of things that those students have done with their studies afterwards. If you're thinking, well, how do I get a job with my MA in Global Futures and Sustainability? For example, Charlotte at the top there was one of my MA students who worked on a fantastic programme about, um, about rewilding, about beaver reintroduction in Devon. Uh, she then worked for the uh, worked for the civil service with that for a little while, um, used that um, piece of research as a calling card to work for the government, and now she's back doing an MA, uh, sort of doing a PhD, um, a fully funded uh, PhD. So that's what she did. And if you look at the bottom, Catherine Dolan, who's my co-convener on this program, says that graduates from the um, from the program, from her anthropology of development, that it. Um, as it was, have found work in non-profit organisations, international aid organisations, consultancies, research institutions, corporations and the media. Really, it's incredibly variable. Our, um, our graduates are incredibly employable and the skills that you learn are going to be really useful. And really, there are a lot of things that you can turn this sort of MA into. Now, the most important slide, I know that it's mainly blank, but down in the bottom left, you've got bb37 at soas.ac.uk. And as I exit this, um, this screen, I'm going to put that in the chat as well. That's my personal email. Please use it. Please do um, pop in for a quick Zoom with me at your convenience. If you, <coughs> if you just want to tell me a little bit more about yourself and why you're interested or ask me any further questions, really happy to do that. Um, I will talk to you until the end of time about this program because I'm incredibly passionate about it um, and I should be able to help you out with any problems that you have. So I'm about to put that in the chat. Use it at any point for anything. All right, I'm stopping the share. And what I'm going to do then, having done, uh, having done that, is pop my email to you in the chat, bb37 at soas.ac.uk. We have another quite a long time, 35 minutes now for questions. Um, those can be general questions about SOAS if you like. Um, I would obviously prefer questions about the programme. Um, and if you just want to 
tell us in the chat or unmuting and letting us uh, le letting us hear you why you're interested, what your background is. That's absolutely fine as well. Let's use as much of this time as you want to use. And then after that, um, we don't have to use the full hour. We'll take all of the questions and then uh, and then you can be on your way. But yeah, hopefully that has answered a few of your emerging questions and I will have the rest of them now. Thank you. And, um, oh, okay. I wonder what's the difference between this new MA and the MA Social Anthropology. Yeah, um, th there's a structural difference in that the MA in Social Anthropology um, has the, I mean, obviously the title is different. You're going to graduate with a diff with a degree called something different, aren't you? Whether you're um, whether you're taking MA Social Anthropology or the MA Global Futures and Sustainability, and you're going to want to think, what do I want um, my certificate to say at the end of it? What am I going to want to put on a CV to employers? Um, but in terms of structure, the MA Social Anthropology, you have to take those parts that I mentioned in my structure, TASA the theoretical approaches, the ethnographic research methods. Beyond that, it's more open in that you will um, be able to choose different things from the department and from outside. But um, you will not be able to take exactly the set of modules that this program has unless you were on this program. What I mean by that is you wouldn't be able to take both sustainability and climate change because we want that to be available to people who've committed to this program so that you can really feel like a proper cohort um, but you'd be able to if you just took the MA in social anthropology you'd be able to choose some of the specific content modules from this program or from elsewhere I would say um, that the thing that would help me make the choice is who do I want my cohort to be who do I want my classmates to be? Do I want them to be people who have a slightly more general interest in social anthropology or people who are really, really interested in climate and sustainability? And those are the people that I'll be taking all of my courses with and I'll get to know really, really well. So that would be one of the factors that would go into making my choice. Um, it also affects who your, uh, who your academic advisor is. So you're, the person who convenes, who is in charge of your program is your academic advisor. So for example, in this program, it might be myself. Um, it would be somebody different on the MA in social anthropology. Hopefully that answers your question. No worries. Thank you very much. And we've got a hand up from Emil. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I I, um, I just wanted to ask you uh, also regarding to the previous question asked, um, is this MA in social anthropology a, a bit more, um, uh, I don't know, like the pathway into further PhD studies uh, a bit more clear? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the way I see uh, this program is, is that you could, uh, so to say, I mean, you have this put into practice uh, idea. And uh, I, I just wanted to have this, uh, this balance of ideas because I'm really interested in anthropology in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I feel like there's this political um, active part of this of this new study, which is really appealing, I think, to all of all of all, all the people here. <laughs> so um, I mean, uh, thank you very much, Emil. And that's what we hope. We hope that it's attractive. Um, I would not want to mischaracterize anthropology and say, oh, it's all theoretical. It's all ivory tower. Anthropologists don't engage or anything like that. They just write for anth other anthropologists. That's not the case. But it's very rare, I think, um, that you have a directed um, suite of uh, modules, a set, a, a, a kind of a, um, a kind of a direction of study that puts the engagement right at the start that says this is politically engaged, we want to study the way in which anthropology can be politically engaged and puts that right, right at the centre. So that, yeah, I would agree with you there. Um, does it give a clearer route into PhD? I, I would say it, I would say that whatever MA you did, it's not a bad way of converting from whatever your undergraduate is into a PhD in anthropology. 
I like, though, personally with this new program, the fact that it has such a clear sense of what the topic is. Within the broader social anthropology MA, you could be studying a bit of anything. You could be studying kinship or religion or economics or political anthropology or some group anywhere, right? It's very, very generic and general. Here, I think that you um, have this much more guided sense of the kinds of things that you're studying. And if you wanted to do a PhD in that sort of area, it would be a really strong choice. Um, I hope that answers your question. Obviously, within the, the department, we have quite a few PhD students. We have a good MRes program, which is a master through research. We have a good MPhil PhD program for students who want to come in and take, um, uh, for students who are at that stage of their career and are gonna start doing their PhDs. So as really isn't a bad place to convert into anthropology and then stay in anthropology and become a um, become a researcher. Um, thank, thank you. Sorry, was there a follow-up before I look at um, whoever H Evans, I, I don't know what the H stands for. Maybe it doesn't stand for anything. Um, but before I, address that question. Emil, anything else? Uh, no, I think that pretty much answers it. I, I just wanted to, because I, uh, again, I, I see this as being um, a bit more actively engaged in, into the topics, which I guess anthropology touches upon any way in, in, in more of a theoretical framework, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just wanted to see the, uh, the link between, I guess, further academic pathways and... Uh... It, it, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and uh, yeah, and this program, it is, it puts the engaged stuff right at the forefront uh, of it, but ultimately it is, an, it is a social anthropology program. It is a program through which if you've never studied anthropology before, you will get the grounding, you'll get the same grounding as um, in terms of our big theory module and our big ethnography module that everybody else gets as a master student at SOAS. You'll just hear get, um, as I say, this excited and I would say exciting cohort of students to study with who are all engaging with the, with the same kind of big issues. Um, and you'll get a much more sort of guided set of um, modules all looking at these big issues in an engaged way. That's what you'll get that's different. Both, I would say, are a route into PhD. That is not a guaranteed route. It's not like, okay, I've done my master's, I'll, uh, I'll do, I'm straight into a PhD. You still have to have a good project, apply for it. If funding is the thing that you need, that, that is still competitive. Um, but yeah, I would say that both are a great route into um, ending up doing further research in anthropology. Thank you. No worries. Um, H Evans. Um, would funding be available for the research projects? Uh, yeah, that's small amounts. Um, oh, so in terms of funding, just whilst I'm on it and just whilst the questions come up, if you check out, oh, lovely, another brilliant question from, uh, from Shreya. I'm going to get on that in a minute. I'm just going to do this one at a time though. Um, yeah, a question from, uh, from, from H Evans. Would funding be available for the research projects? If you go on the website, and this is just an aside, but I think it's important, and look under fees, you'll see the fee structure. Um, and underneath that, you'll see a tab for funding and scholarships. There are, is funding available through various different, uh, different uh, scholarships. Um, some of them are time limited. Some of them you have to get on it and apply for them before they disappear. Um, some of them are only available if you've come from particular parts of the world or are doing research in particular parts of the world. Um, but have a look at what's there. Some of them are much more open. Have a look at what's available. In terms of doing the dissertation over the summer, right, that piece of research, small bits of travel money are available, are, can be applied for. There is a limited amount of, amount of funding, um, but the, people apply for it and people do get it. Travel grants, basically, in order to complete the, re, uh, the research over, uh, over the summer. Um, obviously, if obviously if you've got a completely funded masters um anyway then then that's that's not not so much an issue but yeah whatever you are on whether you're funded funded or not there is a pot of money that you can apply for in order to do dissertation work over the summer not everybody gets it it is competitive all right um but it it is there and you have to make a case for why you want it for your particular project um, particular project in terms of what people do for dissertation it's whatever is in their means. So some people um, do go and do a kind of field work 
abroad somewhere, uh, somewhere where they're not from. Some do uh, something completely library based, based upon literature. Some people do field work at home, um, which may mean literally in the town that they're from or just more generally in the country that they're from. There are a lot of different ways of doing good research in anthropology. I personally do my research as an anthropologist in the UK and I'm from the UK. Um, and I wave, always wave a little flag for its benefits, um, for why it can be an exciting and good thing. Um, I find that there are anthropological to uh, topics that are really interesting and communities and societies doing interesting stuff um, wherever you go, right? You can always find a site for research. Um, so Shreya's got a brilliant question. Thank you. She thanks me, which is nice. Um, does this program cover cultural and linguistic topics like gen gender studies? Yes, it does. Not just does our department have um, some really interesting optional modules that you can take, which are specifically about the anthropology of gender. We've got um, the body race, the body and desire, is that what it's called? It's a fantastic module which is um, which is about the anthropology of, uh, of gender and uh, gender and bodies. Um, but also you could take modules from the gender studies department as well as some of your optionals, but also some of the key topics in these core modules as part of the program do cover aspects of gen uh, of gender. For example, in sustainability, things like affective labor, labor um, gen gendered working relationships, um, development and gender are core topics. In climate change, we look at um, we look at the way in which uh, in which gender and uh, gender and the climate intersect, right? Um, it comes up in our core theory module, it comes up in ethnographic research methods, it's really inseparable. Anthropology has contributed a lot to um, a lot to gender studies over the years and gender studies has contributed a lot to anthropology so yeah I don't think you'll find a gap there um, and also you can take optional stuff from outside of directly the department. Um, cultural and linguistic topics yeah and um, anthrop anthropology has again a long engagement with linguistics. Um, this isn't sort of the American style anthropological system where you have the fourfold approach cultural anthropology, biological, linguistic, archaeology. This is just social anthropology. Um, but we do talk about linguistic topics. It does come up and come in. Um, and again, your optional modules could be used to study a language or study linguistics. Um, and yeah, in terms of cultural studies, um, that's absolutely an allied discipline alongside anthropology. We borrow a lot of theory from cultural and critical studies. Yeah. The, the answer to your question is there is a lot of that, I would say and hope. Um, Maggie has given H. Evans a link. Um, will there be face to face slash on campus teaching when the program starts later in the year? That was a question that I was looking forward to, but not um, because it's not 100% certain. Um, but I would say that the likelihood is and I uh, and I, I'm not going to overcommit myself that there will be both online and on campus teaching available with the new teaching year for student uh, for students right so that should uh, offer a degree of flexibility. I say that because with the pan uh, not just with the pandemic but also with how we envision the university being accessible into the future. We have a real commitment to allowing students the uh, students to access what we're what we're doing, sort of whatever their whatever their situation. That I can't be a promise. I don't want to get quoted on it um, because a lot can change between now, uh, between now and then. Um, but considering lockdowns, travel bans, and the rest of it, we need to make the university accessible. And we are going to be running our programs, whatever happens. We can commit that much. And so the. And so I would say that the likelihood is that there will be a combined online and on campus offer. That is me being as honest with you about it as I can as I can be without completely committing. It's, I hope that's a that's a satisfactory answer. All right, thank you. Um, now, ooh, that was a bit of a rush, wasn't it? That was a bit of a rush of questions, mainly in the chat, but um, which, which is fine, but. We, perfectly happy for you to unmute yourself and shout at me. This is how I run my seminars. I'm like, 
unmute yourself and shout at me. Um, but please, if there is anybody else with anything to ask, we will take your questions. Oh, yeah, no, of course, you absolutely may. We've got one more in the chat. Oh, and it will be after I talk to Ayushman, who I think I was told was coming. Are you AU, who heard about this through Lottie? I think I know who you are. Um, my interests are more towards climate change, you say. Could you give an example of what the job prospects would be within the climate sector with this program? Yeah, uh, I, I could. Yeah, uh, it did, obviously, no program, no MA comes with a guarantee of a job at the end of it. And the ones that tell you, tell you that they are a lie. Um, but I can tell you a little bit more about what anthropologists will would do coming out with uh, anthropology graduates with an MA would do in that particular sector. Quite often, and this is in, incidentally, if it sounds like things are being torn down in the background. My cat is a very naughty cat and is running around the living room currently batting something. It's probably a cork. To be honest with you, she likes wine bottle corks. She's um, so, so sorry about the slight disruption. Daddy. Cool. Um, yeah, anthropologists, um, people with an MA in, the, uh, in, in this would quite often end up working for, say, um, an advocacy organization in climate, quite, pos uh, quite possibly. Um, but also potentially, as I say, um, a government, a, a, a NGO. Um, as I say, I've had students to go to work in the civil service. We have students who would potentially work for, as I say, uh, charities who are trying to uh, trying to roll out particular um, particular sustainable technologies, um, advocacy groups, lobbying uh, lobbying groups, that kind of thing, or for that matter, um, journalism, communication these kinds of things anywhere where there's an interface between people and you know the technology or the money and the governance are places where anthropologists tend to be really popular increasingly employers like the fact that anthropologists uh, anthropology trained graduates are trained in ethnography right they see ethnography as a really good solution to problems and there are quite a lot of um companies out there who want who want who do research be that kind of user experience research or things like that, who want people who are trained in ethnography because they realize that it gives you a real set of skills for looking at um, and sort of diagnosing the relationship between people. How does the social fit together? Um, and so that can be very much corporate, as in, you know, go and look at the user relationship between this particular app and a particular group of people, or it can be. Um, more in sort of, as I say, advocacy and cultural translation, if that makes any sense to you. Organisations that try to mediate between power and people. So have, have a look at the kind of, in fact, maybe grab a few minutes with um, Ed Simpson, the head of department who, um, who works as a consultant with engineers and with, uh, with governance around sustainability and infrastructure He's a really good person for uh, to ask those sorts of questions because that's the kind of work that he does personally. Will there be personal tutors who could provide one on one support? Yeah, several actually. Um, the most important people for you as somebody coming in and taking a program at SOAS are your course convener, who is also your academic advisor. They're usually the same person. So this, this will be the person who's setting up and running your course. They will also be there to give you academic advice whenever you need it. Right. Um, yes, you did go to get to know things from uh, from Lottie. Harry. Um, so, yeah, that academic advisor is there whenever you need them. I see my academic advisees at least four times a year, but some of them come and see me about every week. And that's OK. Um, it, it's uh, I've, I've got a few, but I make time for all of them. And they will um, those academic advisors are professionals in their field. And if they aren't giving you exactly what you're looking for and aren't an expert in exactly the stuff you're interested in, look through the faculty, uh, as in the staff list on the website. Everybody's got office hours. Everybody on, uh, in the department has at least two or three hours a week that are set aside for seeing students. So I have two hours on a Monday, but actually I end up seeing students for more like five or six hours a week by appointment. Um, and we're very happy to talk you through 
the things that you're interested in, right? Um, and so you may see that one of our faculty has a, in the case of Jacob, a relationship, uh, he looks at um, food sustainability in China, and you think, well, that's the kind of thing I'm interested in, food pathways and, uh, and China specifically. I'll talk to, Dra uh, to Jacob, and so you, uh, you go and spend a few minutes in his office hours. The other important resource, I guess, is your dissertation supervisor, somebody that you get assigned in term two because their research broadly, and sometimes it, it's not particularly specific, reflects the things that you're interested in. And you're going to meet with them at least four times, um, but sometimes a lot more as you develop a project together with them. So yeah, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with um, academics at SOAS. I think we're quite proud of that, of our relatively good uh, staff-student ratio and the fact that we are able to give you quite a bit of our time. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's good to know. Yeah, good, I'm very glad. Um, yeah, I. the questions keep on coming, which is lovely. I'm, I'm really glad that there's a nice flow of things. So keep them coming. And if we're exhausted with it, um, because I know that everybody's had the chance to ask something now, now just about, which is great, um, then we'll call it a day. Da, 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 da. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm just going to give you a few more minutes, not minutes, because that would be us just getting bored of my voice for another five minutes. I'll give you, I'll give you two minutes to write down any, any emerging questions or else we'll call it, call it in the case of a couple of you, a nice early morning and allow you to go and get some sleep. I am very happy, by the way. I know that I'm here to particularly advocate for my program here, for my for my baby, for the Global Futures and Sustainability, which I do think is an exciting development in the department. But if you do um, feel like I'd be a good person to talk to or just run things across about any of the other programs you're considering, OK, I'm not an expert in the anthropology of food or, or, or in medical anthropology, but use use my email, set up a meeting, come talk to me. Really happy to. But whatever you come and do, make sure it's anthropology. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not really joking. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. Shreya actually laughed at me, yay, amazing. I'm actually occasionally funny. All right, okay, thank you very much, everybody. It's been very, very nice to get to meet you. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that much about you, but from you describing some of your interests and where you are in the world, it, you seem like a really exciting bunch. So hopefully, at least a few of you are gonna come and be part of this exciting project, uh, projects in the anthropology department. I really, really hope so. All right, good luck with whatever you, uh, you're all doing. Goodbye.